Hey, everybody. Chad Westport here, and I am back with a special series about cannabis and our body. And I have brought on uh, someone who I look up to and get a lot of great information from, Dr. Miami Shields. So thank you for joining us today. I appreciate that. Can you maybe tell people a little bit more about your background and experience? Sure. So I'm a pharmaceutical scientist and I maybe I'll back up and say that I started smoking weed when I was 15 and it changed my life. Uh, cannabis saved my life and I've dedicated my life to studying cannabis and understanding the brain and how it can be used for therapeutic benefit and how to like maybe maximize those benefits and minimize the risks. So I was in academic pharmaceutical research in the acosinoid system, which is downstream of the endocannabinoid system uh, for a couple of years. And then I did my PhD on the structural biochemistry of the endocannabinoid system. And then I spent four years in the industry um, where I was the chief scientific officer for a startup. And I studied the rare molecules that are only present in high temperature. So in like smoke, dabbing or vaping. Um, so rare cannabinoids that are produced at higher temperatures and combinations like that don't occur like in the flower as its own. Um, and I'm really excited to be here too. I, I love teaching about this stuff. I think that it, I think that everyone should understand themselves and their cannabis use because it makes cannabis just that much better. And, and for the people out there, um, you know, again, we want to give them the best most reliable information that we can from the best sources that we can. And I'm glad that you're here to do that. So thank you. All right. Shoot a question. All right. So the first kind of thing is you, you mentioned the endocannabinoid system. So we often refer to it as ECS. What is the ECS endocannabinoid system? And does everybody have one? Yes. Everybody has one. Every warm blooded animal has one dogs cats mountain lion like mountain lions regular oh lions God. cheetahs well yeah okay all the warm-blooded animals have them um the endocannabinoid system is a system inside our brain and body it's located a lot in like our fat and small intestine our immune system as well um everyone has one and a lot of people are familiar with the serotonin system or the dopamine system as a signaling system so it is a system within the body that is used to talk. The body uses it to talk to itself. And the endocannabinoid system is just another type of system. Uh, it is actually a system that regulates the others. Um, all of us have it. And actually it is um, the largest system by like weight, the, the CB1 receptor, which is the main receptor of this system. Um, is the most prevalent, it, like we have the most of that receptor in our entire bodies, which I think is kind of a fun fact. It, it's pretty much everywhere. Uh, it's all over, although it's it's a lot in our brain and then a lot in our fat cells too. Now, when was this endocannabinoid system discovered? Is this a recent discovery or have we known about this for a long time? Actually, it's more recent than some of the other ones, which is why serotonin, dopamine, GABA, it's why the others are better known because they were discovered first. Um, the endocannabinoid system was discovered in like the 90s. So we knew that it was likely there because we isolated THC and CBD, um, Dr. Mishulam did, in the 60s. So once that was isolated, it was like, okay, these molecules are active in, in cannabis. They must be interacting with something. And it wasn't until the 90s, though, that they were actually able to find the, the receptors. And actually, so since then, it's been growing and growing and growing. The system gets larger and larger as we find more things that interact with it. Um, in terms of like its evolutionary history, the earliest evolutionary like animal that has an endocannabinoid system or has activity with the endocannabinoid system is a um, hydra which is in the Nadarian family and it's part of the same family as jellyfish. So, okay. I mean, it is, it is ancient, ancient, like actually um, the enzyme that I did my PhD on. So enzymes are little machines and the enzyme that I did my PhD on is a little machine that chews up and deactivates the endocannabinoids. That's mm -hmm. like the job that it has in, in the body. That enzyme, um, it was called it's called abhd6 it's a very unsexy name for, for a thing and um 
when I was studying it, we were looking at the other things that are that are similar that we know. And actually, the most similar thing that I was able to find when I was making a model of it, the most similar thing that we have found besides, you know, the one that is in us that we have um, came all the way from RK bacteria. So it was mm -hmm. way back from when we were like single celled organisms. So we have only known about the endocannabinoid system for like 30 ish years or so, but evolutionarily the endocannabinoid system is very, very old. It's just as old as the others, if not older. Wow. And then you mentioned, um, you know, animals, warm blooded animals will have this. So is that where we're able to get a lot of the studies about endocannabinoid systems or receptors? Uh, has there been much on a, on a human model or do we have that advantage because the, these warm blooded animals have endocannabinoids and we can use them to relay or confirm effects? Totally. I mean, so there's these different, there's different levels of, of research. And if we're talking about just drug discovery as like, which is just, you know, that's the area I was in. Um, like when you're trying to discover a new pharmaceutical drug, there's sort of like a pathway of types of, of testing that you do. And you'll start by testing it um, in a test tube. And so there's no animals involved whatsoever. And that is what I did for my PhD on. I actually took the like enzymes or the receptors, I took them and I created them um, oh, in wow. a test tube and tested them on their own. So without any sort of animal, the next level up would be animals. And sometimes people are testing them. Like yeah, it's very, very common to test endocannabinoid system, um, like new pharmaceutical tests and stuff on like rats, mice. Uh, some of the early studies on cannabis done by um, Dr. Toby Yarbe, who is like, was such an influential scientist in my in my career he was just the bomb he was so cool um rest in peace toby he is like um just so influential i mean he did a lot of the early studies on it and he used to do them on doves and pigeons um okay like training them about like he would basically have them in one of the first powerpoint presentations he ever gave he showed the apparatus for how he would give the animals cannabis and it basically was a bull piece on top of a glass container where the animal was inside. And then he'd hook up a hose and light the bull piece, <laughs> fill the Hot chamber with smoke and, <laughs> and close it, um, which later they moved on to doing like, you know, either injections or orally administrating it or administrating it by like um, syringe lavage. But um, we do use it actually to, to test on animals a ton just to like answer the <laughs> question point blank. Well, that's great. And I think that's a good overview of just kind of the endocannabinoid system and a little bit of how it works. Everybody keep your eye open because we're going to explore deeper into the endocannabinoid system, some of the parts of it, some of the reactions and the chemicals that bind with it. So I appreciate you hanging out today and we will see you guys on the next one. One, two, one, four.